Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. <laughs> Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Well, today, my friends, I'm going to hit the mail basket. And I'm going to go through a bunch of emails. And by the way, if you ever want to send me an email, I get about 50 emails a day, believe it or not. And you can be a part of that if you have a comment about the show or if you have a question you want answered. Just hit me up at askdell at l-u-i-n-c dot com. That's A-S-K, ask, D-E-L, one L, askdell at l-u-i-n-c dot com. And l-u-i-n-c dot com stands for Lifestyles Unlimited, Inc., L-U, Lifestyles Unlimited, Inc., I-N-C, dot com. So it's askdell at L-U-I-N-C, dot com. Sometimes I'll read your stuff on the the air. If you ask me not to read it, if it's personal, I'll just keep you anonymous and or use the thought without using the actual email. So the bottom line is that I'm always interested to see what people have to think and what questions they have so we can cater the show towards the needs of the audience out there. Today, the emails I'm going to read to you are going to be random. I didn't put them into groups to try to make a point with them. I'm just going to play off of each email because I think each and every email is a person's personal feelings about where they are. So if you're sitting out there, as many people have, and you listen to the show over and over and over again for some period of time, whether that be days, weeks, months, or even years, you're asking yourself, how is this relevant to me? Am I like these people or not? Can I do this or not? And also, the other thing I think you can see in these emails is that there's a lot of misinformation in society. And I think that one of the saddest parts of my life is that I didn't learn Spanish. When I was going through school, high school, they taught French, and I thought French was completely useless because I knew the French people were not going to dominate the world. But I wish I would have taken Spanish. Now, why? Well, because Spanish is probably spoken everywhere in Texas, but probably just about everywhere in the world, just like English is. But the second reason is because being able to deal with people, you have to understand words. Words have meaning, and inflections also have meaning. And if you can't understand people's words or inflections, then you can't understand them. But let's turn that around. If you're out there and you don't understand words that successful people use, then you're not going to be able to be successful. You can't be successful without being able to articulate successful words. So I've got emails here where people ask me, can I really do this or not? And the answer is yes, but you got to get involved. You've got to be speaking to people about things you've never spoken to anyone about in the past. Otherwise, you won't understand the words. And if you don't understand the words, then you won't understand the sentences, and the sentences won't make sense in the paragraphs, and the paragraphs will not lead you to the solutions you need to change your life. I did a deal one time on dance interpretation, and I talked about the fact when you first learn to dance, they teach you these steps. They're awkward, they're uncoordinated, and they don't really look like dance. They look like one, two, triple step, triple step, one, two, triple step, triple step. What does that mean? There's no music to it. You're not able to move. You're awkward. You're frozen. But you have to learn the steps, which I'm saying here, you have to learn the words. And then once you understand the words to some degree, and you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to know the steps perfectly, then you can learn to try to put them together in some kind of combination that makes sense. And that would be sentences. And with sentences, you can ask questions. And with questions, you can get answers. And with answers, you can take action. So it's very important that you get involved. And that's why I'm reading all these different emails, because I'll be able to point out to you within in these emails, some of the questions that they have that are they've already articulated and probably even some questions they haven't articulated. So I'm going to start here with one. It's very interesting. This is a lady. Let's go ahead and read this. It says, I started listening to the radio show maybe a year ago. It was just after I came to the great epiphany that if we, that's her and her husband, had never invested in real estate, my husband and I would have had a lot more fun. There it is. What a statement. Say, Dell, why would you read something like that? You got to listen to this. Very important. Said, I was married in 77 and we bought our first house the same year. Before that, we fished 
camped at water skied, danced, and partied. We had fun. Now remember, I've always told you it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. It's about those things is why you want to have passive income. It's why you want to be financially free so you can do those things. What she's saying is before we even tried to get money, we had those things, which leads us back to the point that I made in the radio show the other day about the fishermen, which is a lot of times people go to work and work the rest of their lives to try to get ahead far enough that they can afford to take some vacation and go do the fun things that they could really afford to do right now. Which means instead of trying to make a ton of money to live the rest of your life in a great lifestyle, what you really need to do is you really need to go out there and put together the lifestyle you want and then find a way to finance it. In other words, not finance it, but to facilitate it financially. That's really what you need to do. And if you don't do it that way, you do it the other way around, you will forever be working. That's all there is to it. And this lady said, look, if we started doing this stuff, let's read on and see what she said here. It says, with a house, we were working on this, the house, then rehabbing a duplex down the block, moved to Alaska in 81, sold all the property, had fun till we started buying real estate. He died in 2015. Definitely didn't want to hear a show on real estate, but it was a long drive. So she's listening. She says, I really don't want to hear about this. I already realized real estate is terrible. It ruined her and her husband's life. But I was really impressed with the culture of your organization and the ethics. Turned me around. Realized that if I could learn how to do real estate the right way instead of my husband reinventing the wheel when there was a perfectly good wheel right in front of him, I might just like it. Figured it was worth a try. So there you go. Her husband is a workaholic. Her husband is a grinded out, lose our fun in life kind of guy instead of being an investor. He's not an investor. He's employed, self-employed in the business of rental real estate, along with probably a regular job. So hence, the fun in their life is gone. Most important thing you need to pick up is that you have to do it right to enjoy it. But now I ask this question, do you have to do it right to make money? I read on. She says, took the free workshop and a few months back and realized that this was something I wanted to get into, but the timing wasn't right and I had too many other things on my plate to do it justice. Took the webinar again, knowing that I intended to join at the basic level and then took the next two day class. I fully intended to move to the preferred membership. However, I just refinanced my fourplex. As I read the 1031 info, I would need to wait until November to sell and do a 1031, which is what I plan to do. I figure I will take the intervening time to educate myself and hopefully do a better job at managing the property I currently hold. Because of the Seattle market, I probably have 500,000 in equity in this fourplex. Now think about this. This thing that she doesn't like because her husband did it wrong, worked himself to death, right? She now has a half a million dollars because of it. And that's doing it wrong. She moves on and said, David said I should start multifamily, but I'm not mentally ready for that. I want to see if I can do single family according to your model first. I'm still raw from the 32-unit apartment building my husband bought with his 401k. He was already an alcoholic. In other words, this wasn't the cause of his alcoholism. But it definitely drove him to drink. Not wanting to repeat that, I am very interested in the passive investments. And I really realize I need to be a preferred to do that. So it is my future. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Today, we're doing a mail and uh, emails that come in. And if you'd like to send me an email, send it to askdell at luinc.com. As we went to break, we were reading an email and we got stuck in the middle of it. So I'm going to finish off this email. So a lady is uh, talking about the fact that her and her husband owned real estate. They did it wrong and it was miserable the way they did it. They had too much work and so on and so forth. The last paragraph of this reads, I'll be 71 soon. And while I took care of everything when I was younger, I'm not interested in doing that now. 
I like the idea of rehabbing so there's no maintenance. We had several rental trailers in Alaska. Need to say more? In other words, they're pieces of garbage. No longer want to crawl under trailers to fix broken pipes. So there you go, folks. One of the problems with real estate is the fact that people have tried it on their own, and you think that it's a logical thing to do, but I would share with you that real estate is oxymoronic. Almost everything you would believe to be the right way to do it is probably the wrong way to do it. And it's so easy to fall into the mom and popism approach to real estate and end up being a slumlord or working yourself to death and not even getting anywhere. Now, the second part of the email is that, and even though they did it wrong, they made a half a million dollars with this fourplex. So, you know, there's two sides to that thing there. Wouldn't it be nice if you could made the half a million without doing all that crazy stuff and doing all the work yourself? The answer is yes, it would be great, and that's what you should be trying to do. I'm going to read another one here now. It says, uh, this looks like it's out of San Antonio. It says, I listen to San Antonio Talk Radio, and that's how I found you in 2017. I've attended many different Get Wealthy seminars over many years, never joined anything because as a professional salesman, I could smell the BS. I joined LUI at the end of my first evening for only two hours meeting because LUI passed every smell test I have, Dell. I only had $2,100 in my name when I wrote my first $500 check, and I knew I wasn't in the position to invest. But I also knew I had found my map, and that if I didn't take some kind of immediate action in that moment, it would slip away. That is so true, folks. When you finally get past all the BS of all these other programs out there and all these other ideas and you get here and you see the map and you you try to beat holes in it, I say, come on, bring your swords, try to punch a hole in my armor and find something that isn't true about what we do because it's all true. We've been doing it for 30 years and it works. So you, you need to get in. You need to hear the information. Otherwise, you're going to miss out in life. And when you ever find out 20, 30, 40 years from now, you come in and go, man, I should have done that 10, 20 years ago. You're going to remember this show where I'm telling you, you need to go do it now. Goes on and says, it's been a long road, and he uses an expletive, uh, since finding the map. I've improved my credit score from 603 to 790. I've increased my old-fashioned earned income from 46,000 a year to 120,000 a year because I have a goal now, and I was within striking distance uh, of the investment number I needed in my savings account when I lost my job to COVID shut down in June of 2020. What a setback. Since then, I've moved 750 miles and started a new job at 100K in three weeks, and I'm four to five months away from recovering from all those pieces that have just fallen apart. It's not fear that's stopping me. Nothing can stop me. I'm about to be the dang unicorn, (laughs) trying to change these words not to so I can get them out on air, who you talk about for the next 20 years who saw it so clearly that he went from 603 credit and $2,100 in assets to living his buddy's basement and living in his buddy's basement minus $50,000 net worth to a millionaire, all on your map. Please hold me accountable. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of turnarounds people are doing. That's the stuff. It's the it's the understanding that life is difficult and it's even more difficult if you play by life's rules but if you change over it's like i've loved this old saying when i was a kid you draw a line in the sand say i dare you to step over that and guy steps over it and say now you're on my side well it's the same thing i'm saying to you here's a line in the sand all that stuff you believe on that side of the line i'm telling you is bs step over the line get on my side and then you can be a part of the millionaire growth that comes out of this stuff. I mean, millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars have been made over the last 30 years. And they're not made by me. They're made by the members. The company doesn't take any part of your deal. They're your deals. You're making the money. You're doing the case studies. You're the one coming back and telling people how successful you are. It's not us. And that's what you need to see. All right, got another email here. It says, I like both formats of your radio show, the interviews and the rants. Laugh out loud. Seriously, I enjoy the interviews as they are very encouraging, but the program in which you discuss philosophies are very helpful as well. I try to listen to both you and Al as often as I can to keep me on track. It must be working. I've rehabbed my sixth property and effectively retired. I thank you, LU, for getting me to this point. Thanks. So there you go. Another happy customer retired.
And you say, well, after six properties, well, I don't know what it, they doesn't say what they are. It could be six duplexes, six fourplexes, or six small apartment complexes. I'm not sure. But the reality could even maybe be six houses if they were profitable enough and he had a low enough personal income. Six times 500 a month would be $3,000 a month. That's equivalent to $4,500 a month in income. $4,500 a month in income times 12 is about 60000 bucks a year. So you know, five houses could replace effectively after taxes, because we don't pay taxes on our income, effectively replace $60,000 with income. So why are you not doing it? I'm not saying you have to quit after you only replace $60,000 worth. Maybe you want to replace 100000 It's irrelevant because this is why it's irrelevant. Once you replace your earned income with passive income, you now have the choice to either keep working or not. And the thing that most people don't understand about all this is that they think the second they stop working, their income goes away. That's always been the plan. I go live off my 401k and I'll run out of money then. But that's not the case here. Two things are different. One, we never run out of money because this keeps throwing off income for the rest of our life. And two, we never stop investing. So every single year since I started in September of 1990, I have increased my income every single year for 30 years. And even this year, I'm doing the same thing. I just, during break, got off the phone. I'm buying, putting contract on another building. So you have to understand, I keep growing year after year after year. I buy more and more. And the more I have, the more money I make, the more money I don't need, because I'm already where I am and want to be, the more money I have to invest and reinvest so that my portfolio keeps growing. That's what people do with lifestyles. They continue to grow their portfolios for the rest of their life. So one day you wake up, you're a millionaire. A couple months, a couple years later, you're a multimillionaire and the sky's the limit. We'll take a short break. Be right back with the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Today, we're going through the mailbag, and if you'd like to send emails in for me to either answer personally or to answer on the radio show, you can contact me at askdell at l-u-i-n-c dot com. That's A-S-K-D-E-L, one L, askdell at l-u-i-n-c dot com. I'm reading these emails today so that you can get see different people's out looks on life and uh, their approach to things so that maybe you can fit some ideas into your head, maybe answer some questions that you have, so on and so forth, or maybe stimulate some questions you want to ask me by emailing me. The next one reads as follows. Hi, Dell. Just re- just reread this email I sent to you about two and a half years ago. It's pretty amazing to think that I heard about lifestyles on the radio about 40 years ago. And today I was actually on the radio show with Mike Harrison. What an honor. I really appreciate the opportunity. Just thinking about the transition that has taken place over the last two years since I joined as a preferred member, it really is remarkable. I can honestly say that joining Lifestyles Unlimited has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. I can't think Thank you enough and your team enough for what they have have created. David Fisher is such an inspiration. If it weren't for his story, I probably would never have joined. And Chris Wyatt has been such a phenomenal resource to me. I wouldn't have been able to accomplish anything that I had done over the past two years if it weren't for Chris. I owe Chris a great debt of gratitude. And after talking with Mike on the radio today, I reflected on what transpired over the past few years. I just thought I should drop you a quick email and thank you. Thank you, Dell, and thank your team. Truly appreciate you. Well, thank you, sir. I really appreciate you also, and thanks for coming on the radio with us and sharing your story. Guys, this is a pretty typical story. Two to five years, three to five years is typical amount of time it takes for people to create enough passive income to decide to step away or not step away. Some people do, some people don't. But if you get in there and you hunker down and say, well, how can it be two to five years when everybody I know, everything I know says you work for the next 30 years of your life and you barely can afford to retire? Because the knowledge gap between what the average person out there knows, including your financial planner, stockbroker, attorneys, CPAs, and what we know as far as investors and how to make people rich is massive. You just, you can't understand it till you come listen to it. And 
you know, try to kick holes in. That's all you can say is I've been here 30 years. I'm loud. I'm brash. Uh, I try to be honest. And uh, I'm hoping you'll either listen to me long enough to where you go, man, he can't be saying this stuff like this forever and not be taken off the radio. Or people would have to complain about him somewhere. You know, look him up on the Internet and somebody's got to complain. And the only people that complain are people that come in and go, oh, boy, this is too good to be true and it's got to be a ripoff. And, but they don't ever do it. The reality is if you get in here and you learn what you have to learn and do what you need to do, then you're going to be able to get results. Now, what about the two to five year thing? Well, I originally set the program up to be able to retire you in seven years. Why? Because I had decided it was going to take me seven years because I'm very conservative and I was going to go at it a very slow approach. As I got into and started buying houses, I found different ways to buy houses without having the money in my pocket. So my limitation in my mind was money. And I found ways to get around the money limitation that allowed me to grow very rapidly in two and a half years after I started doing it, I had over 100 houses and I quit working uh, at corporate America and never went back again. So why two to five years? Well, people have figured out by following me. See, I had to invent the wheel. It took me two and a half years and I was inventing it. People now get the wheel right up front. And so they know exactly what to do. And so if you've got a lot of money right up front, you can get it done right now. Now, if you don't have a lot of money, then you have to go build up from a small amount of money to a medium amount of money to a large amount of money and get it done. So it's just a series of steps. So maybe your series of steps takes you from 10000 a year in income to 20000 a year in income to 40000 a year in income to 80000 a year in income to 160000 a year in income, and that's a five-year plan. Or maybe you got enough cash or enough investment capital that you come in and do eighty grand the first year, and that doubles to one hundred and sixty grand the second year. Now you're out in two years. It's just a matter of what you're starting with that dictates whether it's two, four, or five years. Now, here's an interesting one, because I, I, I stuck this one in here because it's an example of why people fail. So this individual wrote me an email asking me a question. He's not a member of Lifestyles. And I take those questions also. He says, I'm selling vacant land for cash without using a title company or a 1031 exchange company. Buyers providing personal check for earnest money and cashier's check for the balance. I will not deed property to buyer until person's check and cashier's check goes through. What do you perceive as my risk as a seller? I could give you 15 different risks all in one place. Everything about what this guy is doing is wrong, and everything about what he is doing is cheap. This is a cheapskate, mom-and-pop, slumlord, real estate owner. And although he doesn't talk about any of those aspects, it's just raw land, there are thousands of things that go wrong. You could be sued for misrepresentation. The guy buys it. You don't have a contract. You don't have title insurance. You don't have some, and all of a sudden you find out you got liens against that property. Boom. He sues you. You lose everything you own. He could sue you for any number of situations. He could actually also give you money. And for some odd reason, your money goes through, but then it comes back to be bogus money. What if it comes back to be, you know, stolen money? What if it comes back to be this guy's a criminal and that's, you know, counterfeit money? You know, there's so many things that could go wrong, none of which are as easy to follow up in the fact that you don't have title insurance, you don't have guarantee of title to the guy. The guy is, first of all, an idiot for allowing you to do it this way, but you're also making a major mistake. What I'm pointing out here is real estate is a team sport. You need an attorney, you need a CPA, uh, you need a mentor, you're going to need contractors, you're going to need people, whatever it is you're going to do, you need somebody with expertise. And to think that you could email somebody just ask for a simple question of what could go wrong, my God, everything could go wrong. There could be all kinds of problems. Guy could give you a check. The check bounces. You say, okay, I'm not going to give you the title until that check clears and the money order clears. Well, the guy could sue you again for breach of contract, say, no, that's not what you said. Do you even have a contract saying that's what it is? No, he could say, I bought this on a contract for deed. I gave you the money. Now I own it. Now I owe you payments on it, but I own it. But the check is no good. Now you're in a lawsuit. doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. You're in a lawsuit. And the point I'm making is, is as irrelevant as it is, because this is a really stupid transaction, as irrelevant as this is, as far as the transaction, the mentality behind it, to do it as cheaply as I can without any expertise is what gets everybody in trouble. Mom and pops get in trouble by doing stuff their own. They look it up on YouTube and they figure they can figure it out on their own, whatever, 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 and they end up getting buried alive in some transaction somewhere along the way. Don't do that, folks. That's not the way to do it. Come into Lifestyles, 
get educated in all the aspects of the pros and the cons and so forth, and then take a look at getting in with the vendors and the people you need to assist you to complete these transactions in healthy ways. I have three rules in life. Rule one, never lose money. Rule two, there's got to be cash flow. And rule three, you can't get rich slow. This guy is potentially breaking rule one, never lose money. He might lose money on this deal. Number two, the very fact that he's selling it under the table like this, he may or may not even be getting the true value for the real estate. It might be worth even more, and he's not getting it because of the underhanded way he's trying to sell it. Maybe he doesn't even really own it. Maybe he doesn't even have clear title to it. Maybe he's a con artist. And maybe his father or grandfather or uncle or cousin or buddy owned this thing, and they're gone, they died, and now he's selling to somebody, but he has no rights to sell it. These are the kind of people you got to stay away from in this business. And if you're one, you need to think seriously about changing your approach in life. Because this and those are the kinds of things that are going to get you in trouble. You understand? So don't do that. Get it done right. At least get a real estate attorney and a title company involved. Or if nothing else, at least a title company. But I would want a real estate attorney protecting my rights and a title company protecting the buyer's rights. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Welcome back. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we've been hitting the mailbag and uh, hitting emails to be able to look at and come up with conclusions to what they really teach us about the world. Next email is an interesting one. It has to do with questioning yourself's and your ability to be successful. It reads as follows, uh, Dell, low-wage supermarket worker here, high school graduate, no college, average B student, uh, in late 50s, quietly desperate. Listen to your show, but wonder if I'm too stupid to succeed in real estate because I don't understand some of the things you talk about. I'm one of those schmucks who save, never use credit, and pay everything else before I pay myself. I desperately want the freedom that having enough money buys. I can't afford to make mistakes with my money, so I always play it safe. Do you think it's possible for someone without college degree, no business training, and little understanding of real estate transactions, tax law to overcome these obstacles and succeed at passive real estate investing? The answer, my friend, is absolutely yes. And it's, I believe it's a female. And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, again, everything that I've ever started doing in my life, I had no idea how to do it when I started it. When I learned how to dance, I had no idea. And I just, it just drove me crazy that I didn't understand. I didn't understand music. I didn't understand the words about what the steps meant or any kind of music, any kind of dance or anything. Hey, a year later, I was dancing. That's all there is to it. It took a year. I have people come in here. They don't know anything about real estate. I didn't know anything about real estate when I started doing it. But when you just hang around the people that do and you discuss it and you study it and you take some classes on it, it all starts to gel for you. It's not that you're ignorant, it's that you just don't know and you don't have anybody else confirming your belief system. Some of the stuff in here is pretty interesting because you say things that let me know you understand. I'm one of those schmucks who save and never use credit to pay anything before I pay myself. That term, before I pay myself, is a Robert Kiyosaki term. That's a a term that comes down to, hey, the only way to be successful in life is to pay yourself first and then with what's left over, live off of. That's a very powerful statement, just that understanding. And you understand it. You're just saying to yourself, I don't really believe it or I don't really understand how to do it. You desperately want freedom of having enough money. So you understand that money creates freedom. It's not, you're not saying I want a new car. You're not saying I want a bigger house. I want lots of jewelry, a gold watch. You're saying I want the freedom that money buys. You've got some of the right words. You've just got to get in and get the education. Age 50, I'll tell you what, 50 is nothing in this society. It is nothing. 
I'm 64 years old, and I thought it'd all be over at 65. I was ready to hang it up, you know? And now I'm sitting here going, man, I don't feel like I'm going to die. I don't feel like it's over. And then I started looking around and going, man, my friend's neighbor across the street, 74 years old, is still building stuff, working in his, his ranch and working outside. And I, I see him in the gym. He's a stud. I got another friend that's 70 years old, and he's just lean and rock hard and doing everything, traveling the world and owning tons of real estate. These, there's no 50s, no dead end. 50 is really kind of the beginning of the second half of your life is the way I look at it. It's that transition. In fact, I'd call it the third part of your life. Childhood to through college is really your childhood, even up into your 20s. You're not really an adult until age 30. From 30 to 50 is where you go out there and you really live in the world and hustle the world. But 50 on should be your success years. They should be your aged years where your wisdom starts to win out over your hard work. And if you get in here and you start studying, what's another year of education before you can confirm that you can be successful at this stuff and start changing your life? It's nothing. You need to just get going. All right, I'm sending an email saying that Marketplace seems to be not available to be able to make any money. So I brought out a couple of articles. Here's one article, first quarter 2021 of home prices soar. Over the past five years, roughly 212,000 households were created in Houston, ranking the metro as second among the U.S. major markets behind only Dallas and Fort Worth. This trend is expected to accelerate over the next five years, resulting in the formation of an additional 240,000 households through 2025. After the median home price jumped from 13% last year to $281,000, many people will search for residents, not be able to find them, and opt to rent. So do you think it's over with? No, it's not even beginning to be over with. It's going to double again. I remember when 2008, median price was 151000 Now it's 281000 bucks. Come on, guys. We thought the world was over in 2008. We think the world's over now. It's never over. Inflation is happening. It's just not happening with the goods you buy in the store. Inflation is happening in personal assets, real estate, stock market, etc. Next one, briefing on housing. Rising costs restrain prospective home buyers. Strong interest among buyers for a limited supply of homes for sales drove the median price of a single family home up 14% last year to over $325,000 in January. Interest in real estate remains robust, especially among those searching for price ranges below $300,000 as more millennials enter the marketplace. What do you think? You think it's over? I don't think so. I think it's only just begun because more and more and more people are finding out there's less and less and less affordable housing. And that means those of us who own affordable housing are going to have a business that's going to be strong and robust over the next 10 years. Yes, my friends, there's still time for you to get in. It's still time for you to make your fortune. But remember, as you go through this, it's not about the money, the fortune. It's about that lifestyle. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.